to have open heart surgery at the age of 10, Naomi made a goal to join her husband on a trek to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa. Amanda shares her story of having to reinvent herself after the death of her only child. As Celeste shares about overcoming life's setbacks and the importance of realizing self-value, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. That trip to Mount Kilimanjaro is not one, not two, it's eight days long. And it's all outdoors, sleeping in tents, carrying at least 22 pounds on your back every day from an elevation of 6,000 up to 19,341. So, I really wanted to accompany him. It sounded so big. And in the process of getting my mindset around that, I checked with my heart doctor, I checked with my anti-aging doctor, I made sure that all the foundation I built as a healthy person was in place, and then we set out on a journey. Now, first I met with Lisa Marie. And I told her what my plans were, and she said, let's see your calendar. And we pointed, every three weeks we placed a mountain. We climbed seven mountains in California before we flew to Africa. When we had that on the calendar, I said, well, in August I'm going to Europe to, to train. I need to be in uh, San Francisco, and then I'll go to Africa. And she said, what are you thinking? And she helped me clear my mind, which actually cut my life in half. And I spent 20 hours a week getting ready to go climb that mountain. What did it mean? I had to use every resource that I had. I had to train and train and train and train. Thousands of things happened to me in that time period, from having my entire heel broken up by my boots, to having a brand new backpack 10 days before we left because I'd worn out the one I'd been wearing, to getting to that seventh mountain, sorry, sixth mountain, from getting to that sixth mountain and actually putting a backpack on that weighed 30 pounds and summiting to 11,000 feet and down. And the seventh mountain was a three-day backpack with 40 pounds up to 14,000 feet, the highest I've ever been. Each and every mountain had a lesson. And what I learned is without the resources of the store, the doctors, the husband, without the literal training plan in writing, so that when I came off the first hike, it took me eight days to recover. But by the seventh mountain, I was recovering at the end of 11 hours, maybe nine, maybe eight miles hiking, I recovered in one hour. At the end of the seventh mountain, I started to believe that maybe I could actually summit Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, why is that such a big question? Only 60% of those who attempt it actually get there to the highest point. I'm not about 60%. When I made that plan on purpose and I set my priorities and I realigned my entire life around that goal, and I focused on the idea of getting to the top of that mountain. When I did that, I then had the freedom to choose. Will I do it or not do it? So it came to the sixth day. We're going to sum it on the seventh day. The clouds were clear. I went outside at midnight to go to the bathroom, and it was pitch black. There was no lights anywhere. It looked like I was on the edge of the world. And up in the sky, there was trillions and trillions and trillions of stars. And as my eyes focused straight ahead, as big as the side of the wall, was the Big Dipper. Now, I, as a congenital heart patient, didn't really want to talk about it for 40 years. Only recently did I make an agreement with Mending Kids. And Mending Kids saves children's lives. They're located in Burbank, California. And they do heart surgery for children who need it. Now, Mount Kilimanjaro is in Tanzania. There are 500 children on the waiting list waiting for heart surgery who, if they get to 10, maybe 13 years old, and they don't have it, they won't be on our earth anymore. So I climbed that mountain. My little phrase was, mending 100 hearts, climb to the stars, 
to save little hearts. On that night, when I saw the big dipper, I realized even if I never took another step, I had reached my goal to the stars. As it would be, it snowed. And the next two days, every night, the mountain was covered in clouds. So even at the summit, the chance of seeing the sun was very diminished. So I met my goal of climbing to the stars. And on the day of the summit, I realized that all that had passed before me was like almost darkness. And the message I felt I got, based on the plan, based on setting my priorities, that you said I'm going to tell you a message. The message I got was, leave the darkness behind and walk into my light. I'm 61. I'm the healthiest adult congenital heart patient in the United States. And I've just proved it. Because climbing to 19,341 feet is a huge accomplishment. And everyone in my group did it. 100% except that wasn't high enough for me. I stepped on a rock. And from that rock, I jumped and tightened my feet up higher, one foot, and then back to the ground. Because I want to live a limitless life. I don't want to be stopped by anything that in the past could stop me. So I teach a program called the Great Heart Shift. And if I did a shift this much, it would be good. Now, my shift was from here all the way to here because I had a mentor. I had a person next to me. I had a person consulting me and, and focusing me and asking me powerful questions. But each and every one of us can make a shift. The way I accomplished the goal of climbing to Mount Kilimanjaro was having a plan in place, having a person that helped guide me and ask me powerful questions, and making sure my priorities were lined up. Those are basic principles. I recommend them to everyone. So I encourage each and every one of you to think of some way that you can pay it forward. You see, when someone paid for my surgery, I didn't understand at 10 years old what life and death was. But today I do. And so by me paying it forward, by helping to raise money for children who need heart surgery, I can then bless myself and bless someone else. And that causes my heart to be more open to anything else that I need to change. It could be letting go of a piece of food that's not serving me. It could be thinking outside the box every time I speak. It could be listening carefully and continuously to my grandchildren so I can capture their heart. There's so many things we can do to make a difference in other people's lives. So I call it a shift. I call it a heart shift, and I said you have to be brave to do it. So get your brave on, decide what it is, get a partner, make a plan, track it, and enjoy the results. The celebration is the best. The gratitude of having said you were going to do it, and do it. Be a woman or a man who says, I'm doing it, and do it.